It is Wednesday, January 23. It's midweek. Here's what's making today's news. Minister of Natural Resources Raphael Trotman today met with members of the public during his ministry's annual open day. The minister said the event is in keeping with best practices and ensures that matters of concern to the public are addressed by the government. More in our first report. We are meeting with members of the public to hear about concerns, complaints, criticisms, recommendations, and uh, we're doing... Uh, what we can to address some of them immediately. Others, of course, will require us to take some time to, to do so. Minister Trotman said occasionally ministers get too busy. However, it is important and necessary for matters of interest to the public, sensitive and personal, be heard by the ministers directly. Most of our work is hinted on this, but of course there's an aspect that is region 4 georgetown base and so it's important that we we engage and we get a sense of what is happening according to the natural resources minister some matters are simple and can be dealt with immediately while others are referred to the appropriate departments for follow-up and subsequent resolution issues have to do with uh, mining claims complaints uh, i know that with the designation of new townships margie for example some miners feel that they're mining claims are being uh, taken away because the town has boundaries. We have to find ways to resolve those with other agencies, other ministries. Uh, there are going to be applications for extensions for the payment of fees because some miners claim that they can't make the payments. We invariably grant extensions or waivers of penalties for forestry matters or for mining matters or persons may have made applications for mining lands in what is known as a closed area committee, but they have not received a response, a timely response, and so they're asking for an update. Members of the public told InfoHub they greatly appreciated the initiative. I'm happy that the minister would have made available this public day because um, from time to time you try to make appointment and it's either it's overbooked or various things will happen but um, these are the kind of things that are needed uh, to be for ministers to be able to meet the locals and uh, to work to alleviate whatever the concerns are. I think it is extremely important uh, for the ministers to be able to meet with the, the public. Uh, the thing is uh, lots of times people we have so many issues and as a society I think most people like the idea of being able to tell the minister themselves about it rather than meet with, you know, mem other staff members and that sort of thing. So I think that that is good, um, especially for the development of a relationship with the people. Well, it's an opportunity to meet with the minister. It's an opportunity to share um, and exchange ideas. Reporting for InfoHub, Felicia Valenzuela. Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Senior Counsel Basil Williams, today said accountant Christopher Ram in his application to the court, committed an error using the statutory interpretation of the Constitution. Details from Alexis Rodney. The Attorney General was responding to arguments put forward by Attorney Kamal Ramkaran representing Ram in the High Court before Justice Roxanne George. Ram's application seeks to challenge the legality of the coalition government. Through his lawyer, he is asking that the administration resign from active duty and function only as a caretaker government. However, the Attorney General said it is clear that the applicant did not think through his submission. He said Ram did not consider collectively Articles 1066 and 1067 of the Constitution, which he said must be read together. It's a simple thing. No less a person than the former president of the CCJ in looking at our Constitution, there are two categories because of the words all elected members. And the other, the other categories that were the other Articles that were mentioned, if you check them, you see two thirds of all the elected members. Not that simple or absolute. According to the Attorney General, the Constitution does not speak to a caretaker government. He said it will be absolute chaos should each minister of government be left on his own. He submitted that the administration remains and carry out its functions accordingly. 
Addressing the issue of the majority, the AG reiterated that the December 21, 2018 vote could not be the same as a simple majority. He then explained to the court that an absolute majority was in fact needed for the successful passage of the motion. The Christopher Ram versus the Attorney General and Opposition Leader case heard on Wednesday is one of three matters before the Chief Justice following the December 21, 2018 vote in the National Assembly. On Thursday, the Chief Justice will hear the matter involving Compton Reed versus the Attorney General and the Speaker of the House. Justice George told the parties that she should make a ruling on January 31. Reporting for InfoHub, Alexis Rodney. Consolidated Supply Management and Danco Logistical Contractors Incorporated on Tuesday afternoon announced the merger of their resources to create Ghana's third shore base operation at Craig East Bank Demerara to provide logistic services to the oil and gas sector. Details from Anaira Khan. Construction has already commenced and should be completed between mid-2019 to the first quarter of 2020. Once construction is completed, some 300 skilled and unskilled permanent jobs will be created. Consolidated Supply Management CEO Alberto de la Sada said the two companies have been working on the project over the past year. We have been working for these projects uh, for over now 10, 12 months, if not more, in trying to find the best solution in which uh, bring our expertise uh, and our services into the Guyana market for the oil industry to provide services locally here and uh, set up a world-class international operation to the oil and gas uh, operators, companies that are interested in developing resources locally here. During brief remarks, President of Danco, Danny Ramnarain, noted while the merger creates a great opportunity for his company, Guyanese will also directly benefit. I want to thank CSM to give us the opportunity to move forward in the oil and gas industry and very, very importantly, creating jobs for our local people. And that's, is, that's what my concern is, and I'm happy that Alberto and I can work together. The signing of the agreement by CEO of CSM, Alberto de la Sada, President of Danco, Danny Ramnarain, and Director of Rogue 7 Incorporated, Yusu Anderson, was held on Tuesday afternoon at the Princess Ramada Hotel. For InfoHub, Anara Khan. A new book mobile was presented to the National Library and it is the first donation of its kind from the Rotary Club of Georgetown, aimed at improving literacy among all age groups. Details from Ayana George. The book mobile, which costs approximately $24 million, will serve the east coast of Demerara in an effort to strengthen the capacity of communities and support basic education. Minister of Education Dr. Nicolette Henry, who officially handed over the book mobile said libraries, perform an extremely important service in providing support to one of the important pillars of education delivery, which is literacy. I have to say that um, this mobile unit that will be moving from community to community is important in several ways because I believe it is aligned also to the principles of access and equity because we're taking service to the people. And that is really important because we live in a society where the further you get from Georgetown, the greater the disparity is. The education minister said she is delighted since the project aligns with the vision of President David Granger who said, education will be the single vehicle that will take this country from poverty to prosperity. Minister Henry. We're also modernizing education. You would think that we'll modernize education in ways that you use technology-enabled learning. But I want to say that we have to always remember the pillars in which you're grounded. And reading is a very, very important component of education delivery. More than 3,000 titles will be available on the book mobile with wireless printers and laptops on board with external memory to enable students to access soft copies of research material. The book mobile will be visiting outlying neighborhoods along with nursery and primary schools on the east coast of Demerara. These schools are Graham's Hall Primary, Better Hope Primary, Enmore Hope Primary, Monrepo Primary, Chattamargo Primary, Cummins Lodge Primary, Le Bon Intention Primary, St. Paul's Primary, Better Hope Nursery, 
West Road Nursery and Lusitna Nursery. Reporting for InfoHub, Ayanna George. Still to come, seven-time road march queen Vanilla talks about the inspiration behind her latest hit and scenes from the children's match competition and more when we return. Stay with us. Dogs again and no mailbox. Don't let this happen to you. I'm so happy that I get this mailbox. Now I'm getting all my mails. You know how much times GPL come and disconnect me life because I can't get my bill? I didn't know it is. Anyways, girl, the post office encouraging all residents to install a mailbox so they can improve their service to us. Get your mailbox today and help the Guyana Post Office to serve you better. Welcome back. Having a degree in food science presents endless job opportunities. And today, the University of Ghana launched its Bachelor of Science in that field. Isaiah Braffitt filed that report. Addressing the launch symposium at the Turkan campus, head of the chemistry department, Samantha Joseph, said the possibilities of jobs in that field are not limited to the Caribbean, but also internationally. Because this degree is so multifaceted, you can have employment within the food industry, you can have employment in academia, you can have employment in research institutions, you can have employment in institutions where you have the processing of raw material. It's endless. Deputy Chief Medical Officer Dr. Karen Gordon Campbell said the introduction of the program is timely and headed in the right direction since Guyana was once regarded as the breadbasket of the Caribbean. This degree program would provide qualified personnel who can build capacity in health, agriculture, the environmental sectors, and assist the Ministry of Public Health and Guyana on the whole in reaching the Sustainable Development Goals 2 and 3, ending poverty and hunger. UG's Vice Chancellor, Professor Ivlaw Griffith, noted the program will address the issue of food security. He added that this is a matter that needs to be tackled by both government and academia. It is a challenge that universities also have to contend with and help. On the instructional side, courses that you might teach, not only degree programs, and we'll be offering through the Institute of Food and Nutrition Security short courses. Everybody does not need a whole degree. Some people need a one-week course on a particular aspect that is pertain pertaining to your realm of engagement. Some people may need a month or a two-month course. We'll be looking at a range of offerings on the instructional side to enable us as a university to be enabling the society to contend with this problem. The introduction of the program is one of several new courses being offered by the university to meet the demands of Guyana's evolving economy. Isaiah Braffitt, Parent for Home. Senior Counselor Rajendra Punai says there is great need for some pieces of legislation to be updated. Among them is the law dealing with possession of illegal drugs namely marijuana, specifically as it relates to minors committing those offenses. The senior counsel spoke exclusively to our InfoHub team on the matter. Senior counsel Punai, who now sits among the elites in the inner bar, having only recently been conferred with Silk, believes it's time certain pieces of legislation be reviewed with an aim to change. He says Ghana's system, unfortunately, is penal, which is a place of confinement, and not much is being done to rehab persons who would have committed minor offences, especially as it relates to marijuana possession. He says cases in general where minors would have committed offences also need revisiting. They spend time being imprisoned, incarcerated, and they need to be programs that when you're incarcerated, rehab is, works along. And look at the instance of marijuana. Um, about amending the laws. You know, mistakes are made by when you're young. You know, and it, it, you, had, you need to soften those things that you feel people had no control of. And, and legislation, and we need to move away from just being penal. Senior Counsel Punai, who for the greater part of his career in law dealt with land matters, also want these related legislations to be updated. But I do a lot of land matters, and uh, there's legislation who, that deal with a lot of prescriptive rights. Prescriptive right means that you could squat on land 
and obtains people property. And I think it needs amending. I think it's reached a stage where it's been abused, and it definitely needs amending. I'm passionate to see that it needs, there have been amendments, but it needs to be redone. Because people are losing their properties who live abroad, and people are being depraved. And it's something that needs to be definitely looked into. Reporting for InfoHub, Felicia Valenzuela. Seven-time Road March queen and soca performer Melissa Vanilla Roberts' latest hit tells the story of what we can achieve if we work together as a people. One day after being released on her official Facebook page, Vanilla's song One Voice has become an instant hit with over 350 shares and 16,000 views. Speaking to InfoHub, she shared the inspiration behind the song. When you're on the stage and you just see everybody, you just, you just see, like I said, nothing but unity. It just, it just evokes um, a different change inside of you. So that was one of the concepts that it was based on. When you look, when you see everybody's just partying together and just having fun together, and then it's like, hey, we're just there. And, and if you're on stage and you were to say, you were to tell them to say one thing, then everybody responds to that one thing when you speak with one voice. So basically that's how the concept was birthed. Vanilla noted while there were challenges, the end product was satisfactory. It was challenging. Actually, it's one of the videos that I've had so much challenges with, but um, it, it, which only goes to show the concept of speaking with one voice is not as easy as it sounds, but it's achievable. Roberts expressed her hope that people can take away the message of unity after watching the video. The message in the video is very clear. It's just we can achieve um, anything if we were to just speak with one voice, and I'm looking forward to the successes of us as a people. Uh, um, being able to speak as one voice and not allowing our different cultural background um, to separate us. One Voice is Vanilla's entry for the Soka Monarch 2019 competition. The song was birthed after last year's competition and was written by Borchmore Simon. For InfoHub, Anarka. We are of this nation. Time to show that we are one. We leave you with scenes from the Children's Mash competition which took place today at the Leonora Synthetic Track. Enjoy. That's all for this evening. Connect with us on WhatsApp, like and subscribe to our Facebook page for notifications. You can also follow us on Instagram for updates and visit our website at dpi.gov.gy. Your bridge and weather reports are up next. Goodbye.